Uh, welcome back to the Road to Rcast podcast, a podcast where we talk to other podcasters and creators around the world and talk to them about the crazy, uh, amazing things that they're, that they're doing, that they're creating, that they're inventing, that they're playing with, that they're making careers out of. Um, Charlie, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. You're the guest today. <laughs> I, I'm not were, used were to being in the guest role. Yeah. <laughs> Click a link on the internet and ended up right here in this room. So we're going yeah, to record. Yeah, just, yeah. It, it wasn't a phishing email. It was just a, uh, I thought it was, <laughs> I was reporting to phishing or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> about, your, about your warranty, you were supposed to click there and find out about yeah. your warranty. You ended up here. Yeah. Now you're yeah. talking. Yeah. They're Good trying thing to you reach me about my warranty. Yeah. Good thing yeah, I had exactly it all right. set up and ready to exactly go. Right. By the way, what kind of microphone are you using there? What is that? That's a. I use a Samsung G Track Pro. Not Samsung, but Samson. Yeah, Samson. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, I I recently said that at a Pod Circle meeting, and there was other podcasters there, and they were like, "I don't know what that is," <laughs> and I was like, yeah. "Oh, okay, it's the one I use." Yeah, I've never heard of that brand. Interesting. Um, okay, very cool. Did somebody sell you that on the street, or you got it from a store? Uh, no. Originally, when I was looking at starting a podcast, um. I knew someone who was a musician and they were they had just released an album and they said this is the one I recorded my album on you should get this one and I said okay. oh nice nice yeah it looks it looks fancy I mean, you got a green light anytime you have a green light LED on it you know you're gonna have something of quality I know right at and, least, and at least it also it well it also uh, it turns the green light turns red whenever I'm talking too loud so oh nice it's like turn it down turn it down yeah um, tone it down cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, if only life gave us a red light sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, that would be super useful. Uh, every time I'm about to <laughs> go off in a comment section on somebody because I'm sick of comment <laughs> sections because it's just so negative And I'm like, why are you here comment? It's like, oh, yeah, this defeats the purpose if I'm getting onto somebody else that's commenting negativity. And I'm telling, you know, yeah. You're canceling it's yourself out. a cycle, red light, yeah, red light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, oh, this is how it works. This is how, this is how the dominoes fall. And this is how humanity uh, mm -hmm. It becomes a stricken planet where aliens have to come and take us over. Um, <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah, we're ready for it. <laughs> uh, listeners, if you're not familiar with the Road to Arcast, of course, this is the podcast that is put out by the Arkansas Podcast Collaborative, a nonprofit organization for podcasters. And we create this show so that we can highlight some of the creators from around the world, some of our partners and people that we work with and people that we're inspired by. Um, but all leading up to our annual podcast festival. Uh, it's called Arcast, A R K A S T. Uh, a cutesy little name that incorporates the name of our state that we're in, but also the podcasting part, right? So, uh, it's several dates across several different venues across the state, all through the latter half of the year. You can find all those at ArkansasPodcasters.org. Um, also, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and what's the other one? LinkedIn. Uh, or threads, hey. actually. We use the threads a lot more lately. So I have not gotten into threads at this point in threads my life. Threads is awesome. Uh, it will, like, you have such a, a better chance of reaching somebody that you want to talk to on threads than you do on any other platforms because it's still mm. kind of fresh and there's not advertising yet. Yet. Mm -hmm. It will inevitably get there because it is owned by Meta. We, we already know. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, you can just do like there's a there's a thing called uh, I don't know what it's called. But anyways, you can you can put like podcast threads, right? So you put podcast mm -hmm. threads in there, and it's kind of like a hashtag, but it works differently. In that, it will show up in the feed of anybody who's interested in podcasts. Oh. And so like, yeah, it's really really cool. And then you get like so many more connections off of that, and like you can, it's easy to gain you know traction and uh, get more you know, followers. Kind and, of Kind of like Reddit and mm -hmm. hashtag had a baby, it sounds like. Yeah, and it's not spammy, which is good. Um, you know, people are just honestly asking questions or talking about something that they did and want to celebrate it. So it's like, yeah, it's not just, hey, I make podcasts and this is a thing you should do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I'm <clears throat> famous for saying, hey, I make a podcast and you should too. <laughs> Well, yeah, so. you have to get the word out, but I mean, like, it, Threads is a little different in that um, it's more of a, I would say it's a creator collaboration tool, okay, mm, if we're going to get okay. marketing about it, um, when Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn are usually about shouting, hey, here's a thing I created, go watch it, listen to it, consume it, let me know, and also, here's some links where you can pay me some money. 
<laughs> yes. Yes, that, we haven't I think, had those. I, well, I think that is one thing about podcasting is that at least all the podcasters I've met, they're not like putting their stuff behind paywalls or like mm-hmm. it's not um, uh, gatekeeping. We don't gatekeep anything. We're just like, this is how we did it and we love it and we want you to do it too. And yeah. that's what I've learned about podcasters. And that's one of the parts of the podcasting community that I really love. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, me too. Um, anywhere, yeah, I've gone several you know, several places you already know. Um, but even when I, when I went to L.A., that was such a, <laughs> a such a, a weird, and I don't know if it's like exclusive just because I went there for a podcasting conference. But like the podcasting industry itself is so giving. That's what I love about it is that it is, um, like you said, no gatekeeping. Uh, there's just, you know, freely giving of information. Everybody wants to collaborate. Everybody wants to help out. You don't even have to pitch them on it. You can just tell them what you do. They'll be like, oh, you know what we do? And we, this is how we connect. And also, hey, I've got some ideas if you were just open to hear it. Um, but yeah, uh, that was the opposite of what I expected of going to L.A. because it was my first mm-hmm. time there. And I mm-hmm. was like, I've seen the movies. And this is my only touchstone of what L.A. people are like. And plus in Arkansas, because <laughs> Arkansas has an opinion of everywhere else, like collectively as a as a mm-hmm. as a population. Right. Um, even though most of these people have moved here from California and all of the world, you know, what I mean, but like all yeah. of a sudden they are lifelong Arkansans and nobody else does it like them. Stay out of our state. This is our natural state and blah, 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 blah. We don't do it like the people in California. It's like, you're from California. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but anyways, I guess that impression left, you know, something on me where I was like, oh, it's going to be like everybody's out for themselves and it's going to be kind of rude. They're going to try to step on me. You know I mean? If I'm kind to people, but it's like, oh, no, this is the exact opposite. This is awesome. I love this. Well- it's probably helpful that you went to a podcasting conference in LA. So you were already around those people who the culture right. is like yeah. friendly, nice, let's share, let's let's do all these cool things. Do you want to come no. on my podcast? I'll come on your podcast. Like it, kind of it a definitely thing. it definitely changed uh changed tones when I stepped out of that hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What do you uh, mean? Yeah, just so much. Hey, yeah, it's it's wild. Um, yeah, different tone shift, but anyway, that's a different thing. You you're, like my cup? You're... I've got. I'm having a problem with it because I want it to be on camera, but the problem is that I hold it with my right hand because I'm right-handed, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, but okay. the face the face is on the other the side. The face is on the left. It's a left-handed mug, but they didn't have a right-handed mug for me. And I didn't realize that that was a thing even. Well, and well, so, maybe. Well, it, it into frame. It says bite me. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. For the listeners, it's it's a it's a big ceramic mug, uh, that says bite me on the black mug, but then there's like blood pouring out of the top of it. So my, it's You're my like vampire coffee a cup. Lovely hu- well, I think it is a right handed mug because you look at the bite me every time. Yeah, but there's not like a delicious snack I can have. I guess I could do like that thing that people are doing with their Stanley cups where they have those you've seen those? Those oh, uh yeah rings that they put around the top of the straw uh-huh. there's like a snack box on top of it what if we did uh-huh. that with coffee yeah. where there's just like little like donut holes over here yeah and, uh, yeah you know what i mean that sounds delicious i'm in yeah maybe some croissant <laughs> pieces there's anyway. your million dollar idea ty that's my million dollar idea mm-hmm. i knew it kind of be one day <laughs> um so you are a podcast host yourself yes i am all right tell us about that podcast So my podcast is Saturday Night Sleepover. Um, It is uh, somewhat vibes of like how we've been just talking back and forth and having a conversation, Um, except for uh, usually my guests uh, are, um, they are like this season I have returning guests that come on and they're my friends and um, we just have a conversation about whatever's going on in our lives. And um, one of my goals with my podcast is um, I I know that um, being an adult and figuring out how to make friends as an adult is is a running uh, challenge for a lot of people. And so um, I am a, a self-proclaimed like really good friend. And so yeah. I, since yeah. I, since I know that about myself, I wanted to make a place on the internet where people who are experiencing loneliness can go and have somebody or like it, participate in a third person of a conversation between two people where like they can fall, fold their laundry and like not feel so lonely. And so that is... Um, one of the like pillars of why I do my podcast and um, so kind of 
it also interweaves itself in to be like what my podcast is about. So like anything that you would have a conversation with a good friend over the phone about is like usually what we talk about. So we could talk about anything from like what you're watching on Netflix to conspiracy theories and UFOs and whatever, like anything you would hear at a sleepover is at my podcast or like it's in part of my content. So, um, Saturday night sleepover is my name. You, you can find me anywhere. That's your or, name. Well, the, the name of the podcast, the name of my, my branding, I guess my name is Charlie, but <laughs> yes. my name is Charlie. I don't think we ever introduced you. Yeah. Charlie. Bradshaw. Oh, hi. Yes. I'm Charlie Bradshaw. I'm the host of the Saturday night sleepover podcast. Nice, 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 nice. One thing um, that is, oh, I was going to say one more thing about my podcast. One thing that is super unique about it is that um, I don't do any editing. And so it's like pure, genuine. And that's like one of the core values is like zero editing. Like I want this to be like exactly how it is. So it feels very genuine and natural. So. Very cool. Awesome. Do you have a, a, like a co-host or is it just a rotating cast of characters that you're talking rotating to? Rotating cast of characters. Um, I started out season one with a co-host and then um, she needed to do different things. She, it was too much for her. So she, we second season is um, uh, like I was getting a new guest every week. And that was like way too much um, for me to take on, like on top of working full time and doing all mm -hmm. the other things I do in my life. Um, but it, like if, if my podcast was my main gig, I would be able that's that was a really fun way to do it. And I loved it because I could hear all these different kinds of voices and perspectives. And I loved that. Um, but then um, to make it more uh, manageable for myself, uh, I just have four rotating guests that are have different perspectives and um they're just my friends from throughout my life <laughs> the different um venues like one of them is i met her at the podcast conference last year her name's caitlin and her podcast is the wellness podcast um yeah, we love caitlin. yeah she's awesome but she's a regular guest on mine and we talk about nice northwest arkansas stuff sometimes and yeah. then other things other times she's also so her store is like a uh non-toxic refillery so um we get to talk about some hippie stuff sometimes and it's a lot of fun <laughs> nice nice uh yeah that's awesome yeah we love caitlin like i said um that's that's really cool that you guys uh have co collected together uh in one one pod of awesomeness yes um yeah <laughs> well, I mean, it's all thanks to you, really, because yeah. you're the one, you're the brainchild of the Rcast movement, so. Brainchild of the Rcast movement. Yeah. Um, yeah, I made something that was going to be fun, and hopefully it's still fun. Hopefully it continues to be fun. And, I mean, we're going on our third year now. But, yeah, last year you uh, messaged me out of nowhere on Instagram and was, I don't even remember, you were talking about uh like sponsorship or something like that or yeah well i well i okay so um i am in the event world by trade and so i know that like every conference you have typically once like i wanted to sponsor something small that it was attainable for me to be able to like sponsor so i was like i'll be creative and see if there's a way that like every conference needs lanyards so mm -hmm. I was like, I could afford to do some personalized lanyards and, and donate them to the conference. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, I have these tickets for this conference. I'm going to look it up and do the research. And then I shoot my shot and you let me shoot my shot. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. And everybody was wearing Saturday Day Sleepover uh, lanyards that uh, that event. So Yes, they were bright pink. Yes, they As were bright they pink. they should be. <laughs> of course, they show up better at night. Um no, that's awesome. So yeah, you're you're definitely in the the event world, you know, event planning world. So I'm I'm not, you know, even though this is our third year, uh, I, I take the same stance for it as I always have, which is just, you, you, I don't know, like you're <laughs> shooting your shot, right? So you miss all the ones that you don't take, and that's just my whole philosophy towards anything. Um, so went out there and try to act like I know what I'm doing. Uh, I approach people and be like, hey, we're making this thing. You want to come be part of it? 
<laughs> and, and like there's been a really great response for a lot of people so like this year's got a pretty stacked uh you know event for Fayetteville you know in uh, November 14th through the 16th and so I'm really excited that we have such you know uh really awesome people I mean like the right people that have not only like, like creating really good art and they're really in touch with the podcast industry but they're like really good people you know like I, I, mm-hmm. I know them personally and they're really good, good people but coming down from Colorado and California and uh, uh, Texas, and we've got some uh, that are pending about to be moving to uh, your area because Walmart hey. did that big, uh, <laughs> I always wanted to call it a recall because I'm like, Walmart did a recall. <laughs> no, um, Walmart has gone outside, take, t- uh, taken the, the, the huge Viking horn that they own outside of their store, and they've blown into it to call all the ships forward to uh, to their stores so that everybody has to move to Bentonville. If you're working for Walmart, like you've got to go to one of their two main headquarters. Mm-hmm. Of course, Bentonville, Arkansas being, you know, one of the main ones. And so anyways, so a lot of people are actually moving there uh, because either they worked for Walmart in some way or their husband did or their family for some reason, you know. So, like, your your area, your neck of the woods is mm-hmm. really growing in the podcasting industry, which is awesome. And luckily, we already had the, I don't know, I just think, I think the whole thing is just fortuitous. You know what I mean? Like, we, we saw an opportunity, but I had no idea that we were actually preparing for anything or that the, you know, the dominoes were going to fall the way that they did. So that we have such a, you know, a strong, you know, podcasting community and creators and uh, the people that are backing us up. And, like, there's, I mean, there's people that are just fans of what we do. And we, we are fans of what they do. And we just help each other out, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Um I like, I'm going to say this much. <laughs> I like, uh, I like living where I live, right? I like, I like, I like this area right here, but mm-hmm. yeah. Um, if I was to ever move anywhere else in Arkansas, it would definitely be in the Northwest. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, it's such a different, different thing. And we're, we're seeing that even reflected in the, you know, in the cast events mm-hmm. of like who's registering for these events. Like, Northwest still two two months away and like those tickets are, are flying off the shelf and then like the Little Rock one people are still kind of timid about it kind of timid about being a creator kind of, you know mm-hmm. and uh, it's so strange that you can be you know not that far apart but still so you know different and distant uh, when it comes to I don't know skills and just your community and how it operates yeah um, well we were just talking about this kind of because um, I was throwing out ideas on um, different marketing tactics for uh, the Arcast down south, and you were like, mm, "That's not going to work down here." And I was like, "I guess all my ideas are just for up here." <laughs> no, they really it's, are. It's interesting that it's like we're only a few hours apart, but the culture is vastly different. It seems like to me. Yeah. No, it's uh, no, they're vastly different. Uh, like, yeah, you th- you got some really great ideas, and I think that those things will all work in Northwest. But like, yeah, <laughs> here, 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 they're very very different it's, it's kind of strange i don't know if that reflects you know in um other states that are i mean we're kind of a small state right but mm-hmm. I, I wonder if like other states have that same thing if there's like a more artistic part of the state that it's so different from the rest of it or like even like the larger states i'm sure that that exists right because that's such a huge swath of land like no, yeah, no cal and south cal like they're just they're two very different types of places <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, I've lived in a few different states, and um, I can say that dialect, it's like dialect differences, you know? Like, mm-hmm. there's just a little bit of a different way that people approach things based on, like, how, what their everyday is like. Um, and a lot of different things can play into that, whether it's, like, even terrain of what you're what you're looking out at your window every day or uh the kinds of um people you have in your community it, yeah it's all it's all different things that influence it's interesting no, how people definitely. work yeah for sure i, I think I, I don't know i think we're we are all in some way or one or another we are all you know a product of our environment and so like what you surround yourself with and what you take in like it, it permeates and it uh influences as you you know whether you know it or not whether you realize it or not if you see you know 15 billboards you know when you drive to work every day and they're all about you know uh <laughs> i don't know like the court like we got the corporate ones here right so we've got like this, this dentist's office this dentist's office this dentist's mm-hmm. office this dentist's mm-hmm. office attorney 
attorney, <laughs> dentist <laughs> office, dentist <laughs> office. And it's like, okay, great. How many dentists Everybody do we need? Everybody needs this, to this have really crazy. great teeth. <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, but then I go to the Northwest, and there's a lot of there are a lot of signs of like a lot of really artistic, you know, events that are coming up and that are doing like mm-hmm. all the concerts that are going on, all the music things that are going on, all the you know the cafes that have some event going on. So like it's yeah, it's so so different. Um. Um, yeah, not to say that it's impossible for anybody to do anything you know, wherever they are, but yeah, it definitely helps whenever you have a, a community that is so supportive and provides opportunities. You know, if the po- opportunities are there, yeah, you, it's, it's easy to take them up on, but like when they're not, you kind of have to create them yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're trying to do that. We're trying to create you know, more opportunities for people, especially in this area, to be like, hey, break out of your shell, break away from what you think you know, um, and come learn. You know, come collaborate, <laughs> come learn. And uh, so there, there is a really good, uh, strong uh, base here um, of people that show up to like the meetups and uh, they go to you know, every ArtCast event that we have. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's just, you know. I didn't mean to run off on a tangent about no, all that stuff. No, I love it's it. I love mind, it. I'm glad that we have you here now. So. <laughs> <laughs> and as an event uh, planner, you, you know that because like you don't just do you know Bentonville or Fayetteville events. Like you you do events all across the the whole area. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so I'm just immersed in that world, and um, like one of the things that I have been doing um, is uh, I have been. <laughs> Uh, doing the pod circle events, which is has been a lot of fun for me um, to like organize those because um, it's not just podcasters. It's also like any kind of content creators, like you're welcome and invited to those kinds of events. And um, we all just like share with each other. And it's been really cool because like, I feel like every time that we have a couple of returners, but every time there's new faces that I get to see and I'm like, this what what is um uh sorry you're good you're getting buzzed on the phone and i've I got know. my i've got my french press right here that I'm, I'm, pouring, I'm pouring pouring an extra cup here i am not used to being able to edit um <clears throat> anyway no it's uh it's, it's okay we'll leave all this madness and chaos in there anyway yes okay <laughs> that's fine with me there we uh go. Anyway, there we are. Um, mm-hmm. Leave yep. it all in. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I Good well, thing. that's what I do. Is I just, like if any anything crazy comes up, even if it's embarrassing, I'm like, okay, yeah. well, we have to put it out. <laughs> anyway, yes. so yes, I've been doing pod circles, and those have been really fun because I've got to connect with all different kinds of people, and even sometimes get people on my show that I would have never <clears throat> like connected with otherwise and so mm-hmm. i think um like you, that's a thing that we both have in common that we're be, we've been doing both in like northwest and in central arkansas is we both have those meetups that we do that yeah. i think are a really cool thing to do so if you have nothing to do on a um fourth thursday night we're typically at um the uh Fayetteville public library reception room yeah um, and more people I tell about, I didn't, I didn't tell you this yet, but I'll, when I went to DC for this latest yeah, podcast movement, I was talking to people about the, you know, the podcast meetups and stuff that we have. So I've met several different other states that do this as well. So, um, Butter and Blythe are down there and they have something called the JPU, which is the Jacksonville, uh, oh Lord, what does it stand for? Uh, Jacksonville Podcasters United, I believe it is. Sorry, don't kill me if I got that wrong. Um, but yeah, they have a, a podcast meetup down there because Buzzsprout's headquarters is in Jacksonville, Florida. And they ha- they host their meetups down there at the headquarters of, of Buzzsprout. And now they've grown so large that they're having to reach out somewhere else, which is great. Um, uh, Houston, Texas, there's a, another group out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, then I talked to them. Um, I'm going to be uh, actually hosting a couple of... Uh, of different uh, meetups. One of them is, I'm, I'm, I'm a guest speaker, sorry, I'm not hosting. I'm going to be a guest speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, for the California and San Francisco podcasters meetup, which is, you know, coming up. They do the, a monthly thing every every time. So uh, I'm going to, you know, just be coming in on Zoom. But yeah, I think that's really cool that there's so many meetups that are regularly, you know, doing this and i think it's the you know podcast industry itself i think that's how we're going to have to do this in order for it to continuously grow is to show you know know, ongoing support 
and uh, you know these types of communities that that get together and they collaborate, but they do it on a regular basis where it's not just you know, you know once a year we get together and we talk about this thing, and then the rest of the year it's just nobody knows each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't work that way. Um, so yeah, there, I love that there's so many different you know types of things. You know, we have our our membership for people that want. To, we operate sort of like a chamber of commerce, you know, for podcasters. But while I was at DC, there was a 501c6 that was. Uh, uh, they had these little cards that were placed everywhere, all over the tables. And what that is is like a nonprofit organization that is a that is a membership, more like an actual traditional. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's typically of the yeah what right. the t- chambers file under. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and so uh, I, I haven't dug into it too much. But then there's the uh, the course the the podcast academies of the TPA, which I'm a member of, and on their marketing team as well. So like, there's so many different organizations and groups that you can join, and it helps just help you get tapped into so many other you know podcasters. And so um, it's really cool that there's so many different things that are coming along, and we're just, we're trying to keep uh, this part of the United States afloat and up to times, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that we can collaborate. Well, um, that's one cool thing about uh, podcasting is it's natively global. So, like, it's anyone in the world can listen to you at any time, and that's just how it is always. And so um, I think a lot of our media before, you had to be in a specific place to make it. Like, you had to either be in New York or Las Las Vegas, Los Angeles, one of the, like, entertainment cities to be able to to be an entertaining mm-hmm. entertainer to like make it and um that's just not the case with podcasting it is an entertainment form and you can do it from your closet in one of the flyover states like it doesn't your geography does not impact yeah. your successfulness in this medium like it does others oh, that's quotable you should put that on a t-shirt hey hey or a hat like you got one <laughs> um no, yeah, I think of that all the time. It's like, you know, um, uh, growing up, I idolized movies and filmmaking and all that, right? So, but like, you hear all these stories about like really successful actors and even like, you know, Sylvester Stallone and people like that, right? That there's so many stories. I mean, his, his story is not wholly original or unique because so many other actors did it too, but they, they give up everything. They sell everything that they have, what little they have, just so they can go rent like the smallest, tiniest apartment in Los Angeles they can possibly find and just, you know, pray to all the gods that they get a role in a commercial for Ozempic or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> and then work their way up in the industry and try to get, you know, uh, movie roles and that stuff as they support you know cast and so um but they give up everything and it, those are just the ones that it works for there are others that have done the exact same thing and it doesn't pan out and they end up having to do something else um so like we don't have to do that anymore when it comes to like if you're if your desire is entertaining if you think that your spot in the world is in front of a camera or a microphone like you can do that from your home like your home closet that's where i'm at right now <laughs> exactly um, so i just set this up i'm pretty proud of it and so uh yeah it's it's a nice little step up when i'm not in the actual studio mm-hmm. to be able to just come in here and record I- whatever i want to so i've been noticing that trend that there's been like um, a colored light behind people and it makes you just look mm-hmm. so much cooler and I don't have that. I just have lights <laughs> in the front that don't make my picture yeah. look orange. <laughs> this one's really cool. Uh, somebody gave me this one for, for Christmas that I've got back here. Uh, I don't know for like listeners, you're like, oh, what, what are you talking about? Um, but it's, it's a, a light that it's, it's a sort of a tube that is kind of wavy mm-hmm. and it rolls around on a spindle. And uh, so, like, I can change it. You can see a little bit better. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But, like, the diff- oh, you see how it's sort of waving in the back? You can tell it better when oh, it's yeah. a lighter color. I can, I can see when it more, like, different now. Yeah, because of the ring light in front of me, like, it's it's hard to see as much. But, like, mm-hmm. yeah. That's cool. Right to, yeah. Yeah, this, um, this picture behind me, I just got it because I wanted something to break up, but I got it at, like, Habitat <laughs> for Humanity for $15. Hey, so. there you go. Find your art <laughs> where you can. Yeah, for sure. Um, you could also, I mean, yeah, for, for that, like, you can get a, a cheap frame and a canvas and, you know, some acrylic paints and just splatter some stuff on a, on a, on a canvas if you'd like and mm-hmm. just frame that and put it behind you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, very cool, yeah. Um, so, anyways, I was uh, so you you do this sleepover podcast, um, 
And I was gonna I was gonna do a thing where we were gonna we were gonna play a game. You were gonna guess it. I would love Turn- it. <laughs> I love where- this is the kind of thing I do all the time. <laughs> where we uh we're going to talk about you know some some uh, famous sleepovers. Turns out there's not that many movies or books with the name sleepover in it, mm-hmm. or actual events that were sleepover. But I did find some other like actual events that are pretty interesting types of sleepovers. And I don't know if you're aware of these or not. Okay. So starting with okay, so Chelsea Clinton, I guess she started. Um, and I know that so we we're not going to get super political. We're not going to. No, it's fine. I'm but, fine with whatever. But <laughs> this is a human being. Um, so Chelsea Clinton started the White House sleepovers. Have you ever heard about these? Oh, no, but I did like watch the um, President's Daughter on the Disney Channel growing up, and I just thought that was like one of my favorite movies ever. Oh, what? Did you ever watch that? Like the made-for-TV Disney movie? We were different ages. We were very different ages, and I didn't. <laughs> no, no, and I did not see that. No. Uh, well, listen. Okay, so if you were like a, I were, I'm not that much younger than you. I'm 33. Okay. There's a five-year difference. Yeah. You could, you, if you had a little sibling, you could have what, get sucked into, like, the the 13th year or Smart House or, okay. like, those are, like, the more yeah. well-known ones. But there there was one called My Pre- my Date with the President's Daughter. What? And it was, like, I've never yeah. even heard of this one. I've heard oh of Smart House gosh. and those other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there was a lot. Okay. I grew up in a, like, pretty religious household. We weren't able mm-hmm. to watch whatever we wanted. Oh, my we gosh. watch the made-for-TV Disney movies. That was allowed. Anyway. <clears throat> and your reli- um, religion, was it Cult of Manson or anything like that, right? No. Okay. No. <laughs> great. Um, that's interesting. So what happened in the show? Was it, like, an actual sleepover that they recorded? It was, like, uh... Uh, oh, what do they call oh, it? like reality TV or I just was saying that reminded me of that movie. Not that it, it was. Like oh, it's actually a movie. Chelsea OK, Clinton. got you. Yeah, it was like my date with the president's daughter. But it was probably like a cultural phenomenon that was like spurred off of like her probably having so. sleepovers They're like, at oh, the that's White a good House. idea for a yeah. show. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Awesome. No, she used to have uh, sleepovers and they were th- so they were at the White House and then they were themed. Like each one of them had a different. It says that these are uh, the events were unique experiences that for her friends that got to stay in one of the most you know famous houses in the world. But like each one of them had a different theme and a different experience. Like every time, mm-hmm. it wasn't just like, "Hey, come over. We're gonna get in our pajamas and eat some popcorn, watch some movies, and talk about life, and you know, pass out whenever we you know, we, we're too full." Um, it was you know ex- experiences that they were they were creating there. That's cute. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Thinking about mocking it. Thinking about creating. Something yeah, like well, actually, that is one of my goals for the podcast is to have like a real life sleepover where all the listeners like come and we like rent a house or a hotel or something and <laughs> and like great. do like fun sleepover games and because like you don't get that vibe as a grown up anymore. And I think it's playful and fun. And I mm-hmm. wish that I could create it in real life. So I'm going to fine. I'll just make it myself. <laughs> yeah, do it yourself. Yeah, you know what I've learned in life—that's what you got to do. You can't just wait for other people to make stuff. It's like yeah, if you gotta have a good idea, go make it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so there's there's those, and then of course you know it was Sasha and Malia. I think her name was. It was the Obama, the oh, Obama's Malia. daughters. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever seen her name spelled, so I'm like I'm questioning everything about life and how I pronounce things. Um. <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah, it's apparently Malia. they did the same thing. So like Chelsea started it, and then the the next set of daughters that were there in the White House, they started another you know sleepover thing. And now it's like this is this is big. And I was like I was thinking we we need to get we need to get Charlie, we need to get Charlie invited <laughs> to one of these sleepovers at the White okay. House. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I don't. Th- I think my my which one. Which candidate has a daughter that's my age? That's what I'm know. thinking well, now. Um, <laughs> but I, I was reading down the list, and apparently, so it started with Chelsea Clinton, and then it went to the Mama's uh, Daughters. And then ba, 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 uh, there was something called the Girls of the White House Sleepover. And that's when okay. Mich- Michelle Obama mm-hmm. invited several uh, daughters of former presidents in the White House, blah, 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 blah. That's legit. Yeah. So like Jenna Bush and uh, Barbara Bush, Chelsea Clinton, so other, other women that were, you know, daughters of people that had some connection to the white house you know they were invited but i think we're, we're making an organic uh move into I hosting mean, a sleepover at the white house 
Okay. Uh, we get the host of, you know, Saturday Night Sleepover uh, mm-hmm. to, to be invited. You know what I mean? To be part of this. Of course, you do an exactly. episode there. You do some recording. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. And I'm a natural pick for it because I already used to live and work in Washington, D.C., literally j- right down the street from the White House. Did you really? I, yeah, I did. I, uh, I worked at a hotel down the street from the White House. Um, that's where I got some of my um, event and... Um, back a stage event uh, experience when I was first starting my career. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I worked at a hotel next to the White House doing like mic lines and lighting and stuff for um, different events that were going on there, like press release meetings and galas and stuff like that. That It was pretty cool, but yeah. Yeah. So I'm already in that. I just made that point to be like, hey, I'm already a natural fit. Yeah. I, I already, <laughs> those are my stomping grounds. I basically already know how to get there <laughs> advanced location yeah, yeah yeah of course i mean like surely surely you know how to get there um yeah i just experienced my first time going to dc uh, a podcast movement uh you you know that but like uh mm-hmm. just got back from there that was my first time ever in dc so like i spent what? a whole i spent a whole week uh where like it was it was dc but it was uh uh, National Harbor. So we were we were at a, a resort in National Harbor doing the, the mm-hmm. podcast movement there. I was staying in an apartment across the po- Potomac. Is that how you pronounce it? P- Potomac. Okay, mm-hmm. I never know which way. Um, I'm telling you, my pronunciation. Like I question everything. No, it's everything okay. Now. We um, we used to we used to tease it because I lived off of the Potomac growing up, and we used to call it the Potomac. So Pot- Potomac. Pot- <laughs> Pot- Potomacopolis. <laughs> Anyways, um, across the river, and I was staying in an apartment building there in the actual uh, Arlington. So, uh, or actually, it was Alexandria. Alexandria, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was staying there because I wanted to see more of the city while I was there. You know, what I mean, get full experience. And so I was just taking lift, lift rides, you know, back and forth across the river over to the resort. Um, and then on the last day I was there, you know, wanted to spend that whole day doing all the touristy type of stuff. And so, of course, rode all the metro buses and the, the rails, you know what I mean, all the stuff. And, uh, yeah, after a while. So I went to um, Lincoln Memorial, of course, the reflecting pool, the the war. <laughs> what else we would call yeah. it? The memorial, mm-hmm. There's a it, bunch anyways, of different war memorials the there. stuff. Yeah, and then like after a while, like it all just sort of like blended in uh, to each other because it's all built on the same type of materials, very mm-hmm. similar architecture. And I'm like, I don't even know where I'm at anymore. And like, I just, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was looking for a particular type of uh, a particular uh, monument, a statue uh, that's not one of the famous ones that everybody's looking for. Um, it was uh, a copy of a different one of an of a, of a, it was how do you how do you put this it was a, a facsimile kind of of another statue that was created for a, a like a, a cemetery memorial right mm-hmm. okay so anyways uh to explain this this statue to you so it was built a very very long time ago okay um and it's of this woman that has like she's sort of like sitting with her shoulders pushed forward and like her head down and she's in a robe and then there's like this hood that comes down off the side of her but you can still see her face on the inside it's very creepy looking very old and weathered and creepy looking i like um, it and the eyes are like open but there's no pupil or iris or anything like that so it looks mm-hmm. like they could be closed or opened at the same time and so mm-hmm. the challenge is you're supposed to find the statue and you're supposed to find it at night. And you're supposed to stare at the face until you see her open her eyes at you. Um, Did you do it? I tried to find it, and I could I couldn't find it. And so, like, I went to the uh, where it was supposed to be located, which was the uh, Holly Holly Madison. <laughs> uh, that's like Ashley Madison. I just watched that. Uh, uh, I started I that, that one. I didn't finish it. Oh, did it. you watch that? Yeah. The, yeah. the documentary about Ashley Madison. Yeah, we watched that mm-hmm. recently. So now I'm like always questioning about it. It's Holly, uh, whatever that name is. Anyways, uh, there's an old house that's been there, you know, since like the, I think the 1800s. And anyways, it's inside one of those houses. But there was a, a part in where it was supposed to be was inside this building. And there was like an atrium. But I couldn't get past there because there was a security clearance and it's oh, for mm-hmm. people that are federal workers. Only. And I was like, oh, no, 
that was like the one main thing I wanted to come see. <laughs> but I couldn't get back there because I didn't have clearance for it. And I was like, this is crazy. So it's not open for public view that I could that I could tell. Um, I wanted to go find that creepy statue, but I didn't. Um, well. Anyway, so I walked around and it's all the other statues and got kind of bored of that. And then I walked through. I was like, well, I'm just going to break off and go to see some other things. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw that they had an AMC theater with uh, mm-hmm. laser projection. Um, and so I'm always you know, a tech nerd when it comes to like movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. So laser projection and Dolby surround and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to walk through Georgetown and get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what I did is walk through Georgetown. Man, that was some of the most beautiful, uh, just, I don't know, parts of a city that I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love those old houses that have like, there's, there's doors on every level. Right. Mm-hmm. But also there's almost every house also has like a sub level with like a, an entrance from the street that goes down some steps mm-hmm. into like mm-hmm. what looks like a basement, but there's a door down there. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Yeah. I was, I was loving it. I miss, like, I don't, I don't know why humans got away from, uh, making cool looking things, but, um, that's one of my favorite things to do when I lived in DC on my day off, I would just go and get lost and see whatever, there was to see and i always Mm -hmm. felt super safe there like it could be three in the morning and you would be walking around and it would be still like not scary like my my shift ended at 11 o'clock at night most of the time because i had to take the last metro home and there was only Mm -hmm. a few times like taking the metro at 11 o'clock at night as like a young female that i felt scared really but yeah but for the most part it i felt super safe in that city yeah, so. <laughs> I was I was amazed by you know I guess the, just the diversity. I didn't I didn't expect it. Like I knew that there was going to be a little bit more than I'm used to, but like there were the diversity that was there, absolutely mm-hmm. insane. Like I I was almost a minority there, and I was like, this is different. This is a weird, different feeling, but I love it. Mm-hmm. And like <laughs> like everybody had had some sort of accent, and it wasn't from the south or the north or anything. It was like from a completely different country you know what i mean mm-hmm. um it's so so crazy uh but like, they're the ones that are operating the system, the whole city like i mean everything from bus drivers to the people that are operating the counters at the at the movie theater when i went in you know what i mean mm-hmm. and so um they're absolutely everywhere but i walked up to the uh the national zoo um oh yeah and then mm-hmm. i went to the national zoo for the day and then walked through that was, that was awesome i was going to give you that suggestion when you were talking to me about oh, nice. that i was like I was like, oh, is zoo too much of a kid thing? I don't know. No. But the zoo is really cool. Like, and it's free to go to. You just walk in and it's fun. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that, that part of town is also like a pretty, um, like, mm, I guess maybe diverse part of town too. So. Yeah, there's definitely a different feel. Like, there was a completely different feel from down where I was in Alexandria to uh, the, the heart around the capital, you know, mm-hmm. all the different things where you have people selling everything from you know, face paint to hot dogs and <laughs> all kinds mm-hmm. of r- random weird stuff, and <laughs> beads to pray for world peace and stuff. Um, and then um, walking through, uh, there was a, a pier that went around where all the water taxis are, and then going up through Georgetown, and then going up through, like, there was just like a random. Uh, nature trail that I had to walk through from Georgetown to the National Zoo. Um, mm-hmm. And it was called like, uh, it was some sort of like wildlife reservation that they that had set up, but like the pass was going through. On Google Maps, it said it was Lover's Lane. And I was like, oh, this is going to get Ooh, really okay. weird. Um, but and I went through and I was like, oh no, this actually looks a lot like Arkansas's, you know, trails mm-hmm. where we walk yeah, well, through. Yeah, because isn't that the one where they have like the, like the exposed rock like Arkansas has? There's like some. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong, the Maybe. different trail. I mean, it was, it just looks like walking through the woods like it is here. Like I do that so mm-hmm. much where it's hiking, you know, up through, uh, trying to think of a touchdown you might know, but anyways, like, like Emerald Park or, you know, uh, uh, Pentacle Mountain or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, the, the wooded parts. Um, yeah, it looked, it looked just like that. And I was like, this is weird. It just felt like there was just, uh, <laughs> like cross uh, like cross stitching, uh, sort of patchwork, you know, sort of pieces of different parts of the country. And they're all just mm-hmm. like sewn together. And like, you can step off of one piece of material and walk into another one with you know, seamlessly. And it's so mm-hmm. weird how, how it's just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm from Virginia and my husband's from Utah. So I always say Arkansas is like a perfect Virginia, Utah baby. So okay. per- I've never a, been to a- Utah, so. Well, it's it's different than all the other places we've talked about in this mm-hmm. podcast. Um, but uh, it's there's some parts of Utah that are um, like 
really tall mountains and um, like snow and some trees and city kind of uh, vibe. And then down in southern Utah, there's like it's more similar to what you would expect, like Phoenix or Las Vegas terrain to be like. And so it's okay. like a, a huge and and I feel like when you're looking at a map of America, it's like everything is super small on the East Coast and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just like such a huge state that like people who are grow up in like smaller states, you just don't have an idea of like how big and how vast and how different one end of the state is from another. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. The only thing I know about Utah is like the, what are they called? Like the plateaus. Isn't that where they have plateaus in Utah? I mean, yeah, there's, there's plateaus there. (laughs) Mesas. Mesas and plateaus. Yeah. There was one that, um, was near where I used to work and, um, it was called the monkey Mesa. And, and that's because, um, it's really sad, but uh, when they were trying oh, no. to um, figure out how to get us home safely from space, um, they had a testing center there where they would test the parachutes on monkeys and fling them off the edge. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> so sad. <laughs> With like a but, par- like a trampoline down there or something, or no, like no, an just air like bubble? a parachute just to like, see if it worked. All right, monkey, it's your time. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that mm-hmm. super sad? It's so sad. Like, what? Did it work? Um, I guess so, because we got to the moon and back. So, <laughs> allegedly, I guess. We can thank the Monkey Mesa for our trip to the moon. Yeah, things you that's, didn't know. That's beautiful. Oh, God. But when you talk about mesas, I think about Monkey Mesa. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Never knew that piece of history, and I'm definitely looking that up. That's going to consume the rest of my day, I'm pretty sure, because I'm about to go down the rabbit hole. That's <laughs> Very, very interesting to me. I, I never welcome. knew that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Uh, the rest of my day. I, I got a lot of random facts up in here, up in this dome. Yeah, there you go. Happy Labor Day, by the way. We're working happy, on Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. Yes. Um, uh, we were discussing times, different times to uh-huh. uh, record this podcast. And Ty was like, do you want to do tomorrow? Um, and I was like, yeah, I don't have to work. We can, we can record tomorrow at whatever time you want. And and he was like, well, it's a holiday that I don't really celebrate. And I was like, how do you celebrate Labor Day? Do you like give birth all day? (laughs) Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know. What, what, what is Labor Day? Isn't it like you're celebrating workers or something? Or I don't know what it, what it actually is. Maybe I've lived, I've lived in the United States my entire life. I confess to the people of the United States. I've lived here my entire life. Still don't know what the point of Labor Day is or why we do it. Uh, except that it's just an excuse to take a day off and have a national holiday and pretend mm-hmm. like we're being celebrated while yeah. we continuously replace human jobs with AI and robots. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe one day it'll get called the AI day. Oh, my God. Will they all take a day off and, like, we all fall to pieces because we don't know how to take care of ourselves anymore? That's oh, great. No. That, sounds yeah. like, that sounds like a good start of a movie, man. I know, right? I just saw Afraid in theaters. I don't know if you've seen, you've seen that one advertised. I have not. It's kind of a, you know, well-treaded, you know, sort of uh, topic. But, like, they bring in this Alexa type. But it's like a super advanced type of Alexa uh, mm-hmm. And they bring it to their home, and then of course it starts taking care of everything in the house, and mm-hmm. then everything in their life, and then everything that they're doing online, and like it just sort of becomes a horror movie, you know, gradually over time. But like, mm-hmm. I, it's so funny that we have so many movies that are warnings of like why we shouldn't rely on AI, and we continuously make those. I mean, ever since I don't know how long these been made, but I remember like Terminator back in the day, and then I remember. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Alien, and then like there were so many different other movies that came up past that point where like AI always goes awry, AI always mm-hmm. mess, every, mm-hmm. you know, something always happens. Um, and but yeah, we continuously like are tracing down these trends of creating more and more and more and more and more and more and more AI. Then we make them smarter and more reflective and then more intrusive, and then it steals from more people's arts, and then it's it's insane. To where there's uh, like in Chicago, there's this. I don't know if you've heard about those. Uh, uh, there's, there's self-driving cars, right? So basically, you call kind of like a Lyft, and so you have mm-hmm. you have an app, and I can't remember what it's called. Waymo, Waymo, Waymo is what they're called. Um, you call up your car, you say, "Hey, I want to take a trip from the spot that I'm in over to you know this hotel or this restaurant," and so the car drives itself. There's nobody in it. 
mm-hmm. it drives itself up, it parks next to you, you hit unlock on your uh, your app, it unlocks the door, you walk in, and then like this little AI sort of talks to you. And, Thank you for taking a Waymo. Uh, we, for the best ride, you need to buckle up, blah, 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 blah. And like talks you all the way through it, but then it comes up and then it stops and drops you off. And um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, mm. Yeah. That's, um, I grew up a Stargate kid. I don't know if you're familiar with that show. Stargate kid. No. Well, no, no. I like my family. It was like a show that was like a staple in my family. It's pretty nerdy. Oh, to you talk were about. a Stargate kid. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, yeah. Stargate. I remember the the first movie. Um, mm-hmm. James Spader loved that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the show goes into all these different um, uh, communities and and worlds. Uh-huh. It's like them exploring all these different worlds. And um, I'm showing my nerd. I feel embarrassed all Good. the time. Good. No, no. This is the place to show that. I promise you. <laughs> um, but uh, there's, like, one society that um, they live in this dome that was made by a computer that was, like, their Earth was about to, like, release some toxic gas. So mm-hmm. um, th- these scientists made a dome for them to live in and, um, like, for them to save the whole world. Well, then several generations later... Um, like everyone is connected to this dome by like a piece that's like on their brain and Mm. like they come in and visit these people and um, they're like, Hey, they, they sit down and they're like, welcome. We're so excited that you're here. We have much to learn from you. And then um, they have like a feast and then they all go to bed and they wake up in the morning and like some people are missing and they're like, why? Where are the people missing? And they're like, what people are you talking about? And the, and so uh, th- this is a specific episode. But then, um, so then it turns out that the computer was that was like connected to their brain made them forget about the people and mm. then made the people like leave the dome because the, the computer was failing. Yeah. And um, it, it like it didn't have the resources to keep all those people alive. So it was just like killing the people. Isn't that crazy? Well, I just spoiled the episode for everyone, but that's <laughs> what that reminds me of. I don't know how old that episode is, but yeah, you just spoiled it 20, 20 something years ago. No, uh, yeah, that's, that's. Uh, I mean, abs- I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we could absolutely get there or we could not absolutely get there, but like the rate of like how long, you know, I looked at, you know, uh, you ever seen uh, Three Body Problem? I know we're talking like TV and stuff now, but Mm-mm. Three Body Problem was a show that was on Netflix and stuff. It started off pretty good and interesting and then uh, by the end of the series I didn't like it at all but uh, it did raise some interesting things where it's like you know human society how many years did we exist on earth before we came up with the you know uh, atomic bomb right mm-hmm. uh, and so it's you know, it's debatable but like you know the thousands and thousands and thousands of years you know what I mean that we existed and then we went from atomic bomb to you know uh a communication beyond radio and then we moved on to cell phones and like every time we make these huge uh you know leaps in technology like it's a shorter and shorter gap between those and so to now where we have this you know <laughs> like the ai stuff that's going on right now but the amount of things that we're using computers and ai for uh it just continues to grow um more artists are having to fight for their work to not be consumed and be reused inside of these types of programs and you know everything from writing to to uh, uh, people who have you know <laughs> spent their lives scraping for information on you know mesopotamian you know populations from back in the day you know what i mean like mm-hmm. they spent their work researching this stuff and then like just computer just absorbs that and then like reuses it spits it out usually incorrectly but um it's so crazy that all this stuff is, you know, collectively happening. But I don't know what the next leap is. Um, I even saw some different, uh, some podcasts, uh, like services that are available now to where you can have it look at some of your episodes. Like you give it express permission to watch your episodes, right? Especially video. Um, and it will, like the way I'm talking and moving and my mannerisms and the way I raise my voice and come down low, like it'll look at all that stuff and how I react to people and it can create its own script, uh, make its own video, make my voice sound exactly like I would say it in real life. And then like, you've got a whole episode that was completely generated by AI and put Mm -hmm. out there and like, it'll create its own title and description. 
I saw a meme once and it was like, um, I uh, don't mean to talk about religion or whatever, but uh, the, the, the existence of AI um, made me start believing in souls. <laughs> Because, like, there's just one piece, like, you can make uh, all kinds of stuff. Like, uh, maybe it'll get more advanced to the point where it can mimic that the um, yeah. human piece of it. But right now, when we see stuff for I AI, there's just, like, one little piece of, like, human soul that is missing from those kinds of productions. And so, yeah, for sure. But maybe, maybe not in the next five years. Maybe it'll learn and be able to mimic that. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, if, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think there's there's a huge piece that's missing if, if you don't have that human element, you know, if you mm -hmm. don't have that originality and allow for uh, the small things like your your phone going off while you go, right? That's that's mm -hmm. a human thing that happens to us. And mm -hmm. so if you're <laughs> making a completely clean, uninterrupted, you know, uh, episode where everything went completely smooth and everything, like that's not reality, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if we're teaching our brains to accept that that's what reality is, it's going to be so much harder for us to live life because that's not it. Life is chaos. And so mm -hmm. when those chaotic moments happen and we've already trained ourselves to be programmed against it, like it's going to break us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's so much harder to deal with those types of situations. Yeah. So, well, anyway, I'll go that, my that's what my podcast is. Like I don't do any editing <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's genuine human yeah. connection. We roll with whatever mistakes happen. The other day, it, um, a, a couple episodes, it got pu published t twice. I don't know. Like, I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, so it just happens. Like, and real life and being a real life friend is what my podcast is about and what I strive to give to the people. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, you. So you're been, you've been helping uh, or, uh, organize and plan for you know our cast in, in Northwest, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, what are you most excited about? I am most excited about um, meeting other creators and um, like just having conversations with people that are like, oh, I encounter this problem every day. Like, what is something that you did to get past this hurdle? What is something mm -hmm. that here's something that I did to get past this hurdle, like having that share space where we all are like experiencing similar things and um, like having a chance to like meet other people that are in the same boat as you. So that is the thing that I'm the most excited about. And um, just like being in a room with a bunch of people that are excited about the same thing that I am. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about that as well. Um, and, you know, people coming in from, you know, nationally to be able to collaborate and to talk to other people. Yeah. What's about the thing this? that you're and the most excited about? Um, I, I don't know. What, are, what is the most I'm excited about? I, I, I get the most excited, um, about these types of these events, our cast. So it's like the height of my excitement because I'm usually running around trying to make sure that everything is doing, going the way it needs to. The speakers are on stage. The microphones are great. Okay, for like the next 15 minutes, these people are good because the mic is strong. Everybody can hear. There's a crowd gathered around them. The host is there. He knows what's next, okay? I go over here. The the podcasting booth or whatever we have going on, you know, and on the other places, okay? They've got people coming in. They're getting recorded. Everything's going great. They're laughing. They're smiling. I'm going over to the vendor booths. Uh, vendors are all taken care of. They're good. If I see one that doesn't have anybody over there at their table, I will go grab somebody and bring them over to the table and make the introduction. Uh, and taking care of the green room, like the VIP section, right? So where all those people are. If there's anybody there, if they need drinks, if they need making sure that somebody's taking care of them. Um, making sure that we are recording on all the cameras and that we're capturing all the audio. Like there's just so much to every single part of this, but there's always like a, uh, I don't know, like a two minute gap in there somewhere, like inter inter intravenously. There's like a two minute gap every once in a while where I get to just stand back in the corner and I'm not part of anything. And I just sort of take a, you know, objective point of view of everything and just watch it. And if I, see, you know, being able to see this whole, uh, the organism operate the way that it does, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's an ecology to it, right? Uh, so like all these things are happening at the same time 
and everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. People are interacting and all this stuff. And it's all because the work that we put into it ahead of time, you know what I mean? To make sure that we mm-hmm. planned all this work, all this going out and asking people for, hey, will you come speak or will you come sponsor? Will you come bring your table? We'll, you know, come talk about your stuff. Hey, and then you guys come buy a ticket. Uh, come in, come, come, you know, talk about what you're doing, try to collaborate with people, try to, you know, share an experience together. So whatever happens, like it, it seems chaotic that months and months and months and months and months and months and months of planning that happened into a single event where all these people are here on the exact same time in the exact same place. All of them are getting a different experience, but it's a collective experience at the same time. And be able mm-hmm. to sit back there and like really enjoy that. That's my favorite part. That's what I always look forward to. Sounds like the satisfaction of a plan coming together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just like appreciating the chaos that had to happen to get there because like I'm, I don't pretend that like, oh yeah, all this is a, happened because I had a dream and I had a vision and this is why all this stuff happened like yeah I I do have a vision for this stuff but it rarely ever works out the same way that I have it envisioned but like Mm -hmm. I appreciate it and I'm open to the changes and the chaos that comes from it you know what I mean but it's like organized chaos that happens um Mm -hmm. yeah and then having a planning committee this year and having you guys help that's been uh, amazing and I don't know. Collectively, you know, we had a group of people that helps to get this larger group of people together to have a hopefully make memories and share things and grow their careers. And so, like, this is a turning point for them. And this is a great thing that we helped make happen. Basically, you make it sound like we're like podcast Avengers, like the Avengers are assembling. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, in that in that way, yeah, we are. I mean, we were definitely champions of podcasting. Right. So, um, you know, I think like. In the medi- medieval times, right? So there was always, you know, if one kingdom was going to go to bat and, against the the world or, you know, a different, you know, challenging kingdom, they would always have their champions. Um, we're not up against anybody, but <laughs> but there's always, uh, I guess we're, um, I don't know, podcast evangelists, however you want to put it. You know what I mean? Yes. We're, we're, spe- we're spreading the gospel of uh, creativity and breaking people out of their own, um, you know, self-doubt or imposter syndrome or whatever it is so they can create, mm-hmm. you know, amazing things and share it with the world. You know, like you were talking about how, uh, you know, most of your listeners are probably, you know, based uh, or, you know, locally or like mm-hmm. you may be aiming your podcast at that. But like, it's so crazy how, like I, I host, uh, you know, long term, which is about, you know, recovery. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, substance abuse recovery but like lately like it had a huge uptick i couldn't figure out where it was coming from i was like what is, this is so strange and up until that point i had only had people that were like around the arkansas area listening to it but like in my analytics it showed that I had a lot more uk listeners now and i was like mm-hmm. Why are they it's so but you just never know like i heard so many stories about that where like you put your podcast out there and even if it's a local type of focus you never know where your your listeners are going to come from because mm-hmm. Um, I guess there's a lot of people like like me where, you know, if I go to a place like, uh, you know, I love Texas, right? So I uh, always loved going to Tyler, Tyler, Texas. And so mm-hmm. I will, even though I'm in Arkansas, I will watch their morning news because mm-hmm. I like feeling like I'm part of that place and knowing more about it. And like, it's mm-hmm. just, I don't know, it's kind of a, a mini vacation <laughs> in a way, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I'll watch LA's news and then I'll watch, you know, something from over here. Um, but like, uh, I guess there's other people in the world where they're like, they just want to know, like, I don't know. It makes you feel like you're, you've gone to that place whenever you're hearing about the real things that they're dealing with and like, what are, mm-hmm. you know, what's on the, what's, what are the conversation pieces? It's interesting. I like it. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I do that's similar to that is I'll go on like the Snapchat map. And then just go look at the like highlighted stories of an area sometimes or I'll go on Instagram search and I'll just put in that city and just scroll through the Instagram search of like what those people are posting. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you're filling my day up with all kinds of uh, of tasks, uh, of of things. I got to look off uh, the the monkey Mesa and the Instagram. Yeah, the Instagram search page, man. That, yeah, Instagram that, search page. So many things, so many wonderful things in my life have come from the Instagram search page. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, Charlie. Well, I won't keep you for very much longer. Um, so thank you for taking mm-hmm. time to sit here and, and chat with me about all all things. Absolutely. We, we went from uh, Ar- Arkansas to, to Stargate to uh, <laughs> just everywhere in between. 
Yes, that is the, well, I mean, this is just a small taste of what my podcast is like. We just uh, have a conversation about something and it turns into something else. <laughs> and if that's your vibe, you can go to sleepoverpod.com and find a listening link. Sleepoverpod.com. Awesome. And I, I assume because you mentioned those other social media platforms that you're probably on them. I'm on them, but I um, am not the best at updating them as oh, much okay. as I should. I know. So I am on Instagram and you can shoot your shot and try to get on my show if you want or whatever. <laughs> wow, <laughs> just like I, okay. <laughs> just yeah. like I, I did for Ty all those many moons ago. Um, I, I, my inbox is open and, um, I also have like ways to connect with me on my website too. So I, I, the place that you're going to be able to get my content, the easiest is at the website yeah, because it has direct links to like Spotify, Apple, YouTube, all of those. Well, they can see you in person and live at yes. RCAST 2024 Podcast Festival in Fayetteville, Arkansas, November 14th through the 16th. Um, so starting off with the RCAST Awards and then two full days of speakers and workshops. And then we're going to end it all with a podcast pitch contest with a huge uh, prize package for the winner of that. What were you going to mm -hmm. say? It looked like you had something to say. Well, I was just going to say you can also see me at Pod Circle. Um, oh, every yes, fourth yes. Thursday, um, right. if you are a content creator in Northwest Arkansas, come to the Fayetteville Public Library at 6 p.m. And um, on every fourth Thursday, unless there's something going on with the building. And it, I recently made a web page for it so I can send Ty the link for that to, to go in the show notes. So awesome. it'll have the updated um, page <clears throat> of like where... Uh, Pod Circle will be at that particular time or Great. any other important updates. Any other important updates, yes. Because uh, sometimes we have to change venues and sometimes, uh, yeah, some, some other things happen that we can't really plan for. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, Charlie. Uh, have a great rest of your Labor Day. I know you're on pool duty um, at some <laughs> point today. Uh, and that sounds interesting. I've got more episodes to record today and to get it out. And yeah, fun times. Um, you can find you know, tickets to any of our upcoming events. Like I said, Arcast Podcast Festival is happening across different venues and cities and different times and dates and even each one of them with a different focus. And so we've got a Spanish-speaking podcast uh, festival date coming up on September 19th. Um, we've got, uh, well, the, first of all, the kickoff, which is a full day here in Little Rock at the Delta Hotels on September 14th. And then we've got the... Halloween live podcast recording at uh, Ron Robinson Theater in Little Rock. That's going to be happening on October 16th. It's hard to keep all these dates correct. Um, <laughs> you need to cheat. Then we're doing an appreciation at the Ravington up in your area um, in Centerton, Arkansas. Uh, we've got that place rented, and we're going to be celebrating just podcasting in general. That black tie event. Everybody come out. Just enjoy yourself. Uh, completely free. And uh, then we've got the November 14th through 16th, which is the RCAST podcast, you know, um, the, big, that, the big one for three days. That will also yes. be at the Fayetteville Public Library. That will be at the Fayetteville Public Library. You are correct. And that is going to be brought to you in, in partnership with Experience Fayetteville. Um, by the way, I've got to mention that this podcast is sponsored by Riverside, riverside.fm. You can go there, you can sign up and get these really cool recording tools that we're using right now in this very moment. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. You know, yep. uh -huh. and you usually I, use I use Riverside, it for right? my podcast. Yeah, that's what right. I use for my podcast. I, I um, go through phases where um, I love it. And there's things I love about it. There's pros and cons to everything, but. Um, it is the the best one for recording remotely, um, mm -hmm. like a with someone that's not in the room with you. I think that's the that's the best way to go. Awesome, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. We, we've we've made the switch from a different platform to this one, and like I'm really enjoying all the tools, and I'm still learning about like, all the different things that it does. Mm -hmm. But it makes a lot of the tedious stuff that I usually have to do with the podcast like so much so much easier. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. As, as a creator, it, it does mm -hmm. have some really awesome tools. Yeah, for sure. All right, Charlie. Uh, thank you so much again. And to everybody listening and watching, you know, we will see you later. You want to say bye? Yeah, I was just going to say thank you for having me on. I appreciate being here. 
Yeah, no problem at all. Um, and you'll hear plenty from Charlie in the, in the coming future. <laughs> I'm sure all these, all these dates and things going on in the pod circles. It's, uh, it's awesome that you're putting those on. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. thank you. For, thank you for having me and thank you for letting me be a part of it. Absolutely. No problem at all. Okay. We will catch you all later on the next episode. Yep. Okay. Bye.